Welcome to Catholic Mom Mindset, a daily show where you learn to walk closely with the Holy Spirit so you can live the life God is calling you to. I'm your host, Sterling Jaquith. Let us begin. Welcome back. Today I want to talk about some of the verses from the beginning of the book of James. I love the book of James. I don't know why. It's my favorite book, I think, because it was probably one of the first ones that I experienced after converting, becoming a Protestant. So from going from no religion to Protestantism. And I really just fell in love with the book of James. And so I think it's probably just my first love or the most familiar. But as I go back and reread it, I still just find the most amazing and powerful things in the verses. And so it continues to be my favorite. But I wanted to share a little bit of it with you today. Because I think one of the challenges of our Catholic faith is that we have this idea that suffering is a good thing. And so it can be really easy to get twisted up about that and to desire suffering or to view the suffering. And then you kind of know that suffering is good, but you convince yourself you're not doing it well. So the whole thing is pointless. Or maybe you don't really understand how to leverage the suffering, and so you're trying to get rid of it, and then you feel guilty about that. So you can just see that it it's very easy for the idea of redemptive suffering, which is how we can participate with Christ by offering up pain to the pain that he experienced on the cross. We just get mixed up about that. And we use it against ourselves. And that was never God's intention, right? God always desires peace and joy for us. And so even within a great trial of suffering, peace and joy is available to us. And I just want to say that's a really high level concept, both religiously and psychologically, being able to see the good in suffering, to really experience growth through suffering. It is entirely possible, but I want you to know if no one has taught you how to do that, it would make a lot of sense that you don't know how to do that. That maybe you've heard about this concept, but you're not sure how to actually play it out in your own life. So in the book of James, uh, first it says, in verse two, consider it pure joy. I think we just missed that part, by the way. We just keep going. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And it goes on kind of in this vein for a while, but I want to jump down to verse 12 that says, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. So I think the key to all of this is consider it pure joy. So how do we consider a heavy trial, pure joy, or I think for a lot of us, chronic pain, or maybe we were even able to tap into this for a while. We were like, okay, Lord, I got this. I'm going to take this cross up for you. But when it's been years and doubt creeps in, when the cross starts to feel heavy and the road feels long and we don't see where we are going, and we don't understand why a good and loving father would do this to us. When we start thinking like that, we have lost our connection with this idea of pure joy. So I want you to think about something difficult that you're going through right now. Long, something that's been, you know, you've been struggling with for a very long time or something that's just a season 
I want you to just take a deep breath and sit with me in this time. It's cool to think about, right? That I'm with you right now as you think of that. I want you to be curious. How could a person, any person, possibly touch joy in this circumstance? So I often share about the challenge of my marriage. I have kind of a marriage that has a lot of pain and tension, and we're always trying to figure it out. But it's been like that for 12 years. And I don't feel pure joy a lot of the time. But when I do this exercise and I think of someone else and I think, okay, how could somebody else experience pure joy in this situation? I immediately see that it is a great privilege to be married, that it is almost miraculous that we are both alive, right? That we both just woke up and are alive and have each other. I genuinely believe that God is repairing some of the generational sin in our households with us. He says, you know what? If you will do this, your children will not carry some of that generational sin. And when I think of what a deep privilege that is, when I think of the honor that God would trust me with that, that he would say, Sterling, this is, I'm giving you the hard job because I know you're going to do it. I know you're going to stick it out. I can touch pure joy for a moment. That's all I'm asking you to consider right now is, can you touch it for a moment? And then the practice, of course, is to try, try to do that more and more often. And it is a practice. It's why he says it in so many different ways throughout the whole Bible, but even in the book of James. Over and over again, he says it in different ways talks about this idea of how we can suffer well. So one, if you don't know how to do it, just release yourself of any guilt there. Of course you don't. You have to go learn. It's an actual skill. And then ask yourself this question. How would another person, because sometimes we just can't quite touch that it's us. How would another person have pure joy in this circumstance? And just see what opens up for you today. All right, mama. I love you. I'm praying for you. Have a blessed day. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Catholic Mom Mindset. To learn more about growing closer to the Holy Spirit, check out our free resources at madefor.greatness.co. Thank you so much for listening and have a blessed day.